Hello, I'm Howard, pastor of the Roseville New Church, and welcome to Spiritual Shorts. Apologies for the significant delay since my last video. Had to take some holiday, and upon returning, I've been working on a number of initiatives. Might be changing the format of the videos, but now I'm back to the videos. Let's begin. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first lessons from the book of Jeremiah, portions of chapter 20 and 27. Hear the word of the Lord. When I speak, the words burst out. Violence and destruction, I shout. So these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. But if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in his name, his word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I cannot do it. This is what the Lord said to me. Make a yoke and fasten it on your neck with leather straps. Then I repeated this same message to King Zedekiah of Judah. If you want to live, submit to the yoke of the king of Babylon and his people. Do not listen to the false prophets who keep telling you, the king of Babylon will not conquer you. They are liars. This is what the Lord says. I have not sent these prophets. They are telling you lies in my name. So I will drive you from this land. You will all die, you and all these prophets too. And our second lesson from the teachings for the new church in the work Secrets of Heaven. Anyone who is being tested is unsure of the end. The end is love. And love is what evil spirits and evil demons attack, throwing the end into doubt. The more love the victim has, the more doubt they cast. If the cherished end did not become doubtful, even to the point of despair, there would be no struggle. Certainty about the outcome comes just before victory and is part of victory. Evil spirits never fight against anything but what we love. The more passionately we love something, the more bitterly they fight it. Evil demons combat anything good that touches our hearts. Evil spirits combat anything true that touches our hearts. As soon as they become aware of something we love, no matter how small or smell out anything dear and pleasing to us, they immediately attack and try to destroy it. In the process, they are trying to destroy the whole person because our life consists in what we love. Nothing could possibly give them more pleasure than to destroy us, nor do they ever stop trying, even if it takes forever, unless the Lord drives them away. Amen. Here end the lessons. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you because you are my followers. Wow, that, that really seems to capture the life of the prophet Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah lived about 600 years before Christ came into this world, and his life was nothing but persecution and imprisonment because, because he did not tell people what they wanted to hear. He told them the truth, but in so many respects, none of us want to hear the truth. We want to hear what we want to hear. Now, the, the question that arises, not only from the life of Jeremiah, but also from that quote from Jesus, is a life of hardship the path to a spiritually rich life? Is that the path to a satisfying life? Well, well it might be. I, I, I think it probably was for Jeremiah, but is that for you and me. It's useful to look to the words of Isaiah when trying to understand where true spiritual satisfaction lies. Jeremiah says, listen to the Lord and serve him. Listen and serve. Jeremiah certainly lived this principle. His life was filled with trials, but his mission was clear. And while striving for our own purpose can be tough, the, the path to fulfillment lies in aligning ourselves with the Lord's teachings, even when that's hard. And, and that hardship often doesn't necessarily come from outside of us. You know, people won't mock us. People won't persecute us for living a, a heavenly life or living a God-fearing life. But we will often be assaulted from within. One of the things that we learn from the teachings for the New Church is that people you and me, sometimes it's a lot easier to think of other people, but you and me, we tend to favor false ideas. How, how is that? Well, well sim simply because these false ideas echo what we already believe or what we want to believe. And this preference for easy truths over challenging ones is something that we have to overcome. We have to overcome if we want to live a spiritually satisfying life. We can learn from examples in history of extraordinary people. People like Martin Luther King, who mm. despite an unpopular mission and method nonviolence, dedicated his life to justice and truth. Yes, M Martin Luther King dedicated himself to a very unpopular mission, and he, he also dedicated himself to a very unpopular method. You know, the unpopular mission was civil rights. He represented a minority of the population who in many respects were being oppressed by the majority. That was unpopular from the perspective of the majority. But even within the, the circle of people within his minority who wanted to fight the same fight, he was unpopular. Unpopular in the sense that most of us, when we think of fighting a fight, we think about physically fighting a fight. But Martin Luther King's approach was to say, let no. us fight without fighting. His approach was one of nonviolence. It does seem that we can accomplish things with violence that we can't accomplish without violence. And in the short term, I would suggest that is true in many cases. 
but does that win hearts? That's what Martin Luther King was doing. And it was not popular within his own movement. There were people that said, we have to fight, we have to fight, we have to fight. But Martin Luther King was dedicated to a method of non-violence. The violence against them itself revealed the evil that was driving the oppression. And yet, like Jeremiah's story, Martin Luther King must have experienced frustration. He certainly experienced many roadblocks in his path, as, Jeremiah. as Jeremiah experienced in his path. And they both certainly experienced much criticism but they also both remained steadfast in their purpose, as we must remain steadfast in our purpose to understand God's call for us. You know, satisfaction does not come from accomplishment. You can rack up all the wins you'd like, but that's not necessarily providing satisfaction. Like our quote from the teachings for the new church, the, the realization that you are about to succeed or the confidence that you are about to succeed after doubt is actually part of the victory. The victory isn't the end. Study recently talked about the endorphins that come when we achieve a goal. And often, once the goal is achieved, the endorphins drop off. But the height of the endorphins, those good feeling chemicals inside of us, the height of those come just before achieving. And I think that is a physical manifestation of the Lord working within us in a meaningful way whereby we are able to feel the Lord's presence just before that moment of victory. I, I love the quote, the, that says the person who loves to walk will walk further than the person who loves the destination. It, it's not about the end. It, it is about the end, but it's about the end in view, but not getting to the end. If, I, I hope this is making sense. You know, I'll conclude by noting that um, we are reminded that the Lord is present in our actions, in our efforts. And, and true satisfaction lies not in that end result, but in the journey. Angelic life, we learn, it is found in service to others in, and in proportion to that service. Jeremiah's life was far from easy, but it was filled with purpose. It was filled with service, and ultimately it was spiritually fulfilling. Now, few of us are called to be the prophet who goes around telling everybody things they don't want to hear. But within each of us is a purpose from the Lord, and our life is a journey to fulfill that purpose. And part of fulfilling that purpose is learning what that purpose is. And we will have difficult times. We will have many, many doubts whether or not we are on the right path. But most importantly, we must continue to listen listen to that voice inside of us and recognize when it is the Lord 
speaking. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Spiritual Shorts. You know, next week I'm going to talk about how, how we apply these lessons for a spiritually fulfilling life. How Jeremiah did it and how we can do it ourselves. I'll see you next week.